Hallelujah. I count it a very great honor and privilege to stand here to read the snapshot of the celebrant's walk with God. Please pay careful attention. It's very, very impactful. God's servant, the celebrant, gave his life to Christ in his second year in secondary school in the year of 1969 at the age of five. He read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, within the first three months of his salvation. He got supernaturally healed from the plague of tuberculosis through the impact from reading the four Gospels in 1969. He preached his first gospel message in 1970 at the age of 16. And by the grace of God, he has been leading souls to Christ ever since. Interestingly, he began to receive invitations to minister in Christian student fellowships from nearby secondary schools since he was 17 years. With a passion for Christ, he saw a church planted in Shonga area of Kwara State in 1973 at the age of 19. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1975. And since then, he has been enjoying amazing revelations from the world. Examples in this regard include the following. First, what he defined as his encounter with destiny through Matthew 6, 33, as he read a book titled The Man God Uses by Oswald J. Smith in 1976. Next, access to the voice of the Spirit as he read a book titled The Purpose of Pentecost by T.L. Osborne in one sitting in 1976. The voice of the Spirit has continued to guide his steps till date. He saw his future in God's plan from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 in 1977. He encountered the far above principalities mentality through the book The Apostle of Faith by Stanley Frotsham, which narrated the testimonies of Smith Wigglesworth in 1979. Through the orchestration of the voice of the Spirit, he received the liberation mandate that launched him into ministry in 1981. He received a marching order to start church ministry in Kaduna in 1983. The church which began with four members has grown to what we see today. Go on ahead if you think that we need to give the Lord the praise. On February 14th, 1983, he received a mandate for publishing for publishing. God said to him, the words I have put in your mouth, the same commit to writing, and I will cause the same unction upon the spoken word to rest upon the written word, bringing about the same effect. Today, over 100 titles in are in circulation around the world, with a number of them translated into different languages. God again launched the ministry into church planting phase in 1987 with five churches planted in the northern part of Nigeria, in Maiduguri, in Bauchi, in Azare, in Biu, and in Mubi. In July 1989, he received this mandate, arise, get down to Lagos, and raise me a people. The Lagos church began with 178 people after a three-day seminar. We can all see what has become of that Moses seed to the glory of God 
today. In May 1994, he received a mandate to go into Africa and preserve the harvest from decadence. Today, the church, this church has a strong presence in virtually all the nations of Africa with mega churches spread all around, including schools in some nations. In September 1998, he received a directive to build a 50,000 seat sanctuary called Faith Tabernacle within one year. Again, God confirmed the word of his servant and made this to happen. And here we are seated right in this sanctuary built within one year from the foundation to the dedication. Only God can do this from September 1998 to September 1999. What a faithful God we serve. Hallelujah. In 2000, he received a mandate of mission to the world. And today, this church is in 146 nations. 146 nations. 146 nations of the earth to the glory of God. In 1998, he received a mandate to establish educational institutions. Today, the church has a network of primary and secondary schools across many states of Nigeria and two award-winning institutions, tertiary institutions, two award-winning universities, Covenant University and Landmark University. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, the ACT project is ongo ongoing. A 100,000 seat, seat state-of-the-art sanctuary close to completion and is scheduled for dedication in 2025. All the glory to God. Hallelujah. When asked how he feels about turning 70, God's servant, Bishop David Redeco's response was, I feel I am still very much in the race. Amazing grace has been his melody. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus has been his anthem. And seeking first the kingdom of God has remained his lifelong marching order. Concerning his numerous awards, fellowships, and academic achievements, he always says, we don't talk about achievements in the kingdom but engracement. Can we give Jesus the praise? Jesus is Lord. Uh, uh, with all the permission, uh, can, can we just wave our hands and give the King of Kings to the one who did all of this? Give him the victory. Give him the victory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. I feel like we should just take this one minute. To God be the glory. Great things he has done.